Hi, and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today, we're actually gonna be uh, doing the art lesson in my house. It's kind of smoky outside. We have a fire on our hillside, and so I don't really wanna be outside in the smoky air in my art studio. So that's why my surroundings are a little bit different. We're inside my house. The lesson we're gonna be doing today is called, I call it Happy Camper. So this is some of my fondest memories of growing up was going camping with my family when I was a little girl. So I thought it would be really fun to do a camping picture today. I hope you enjoy the lesson. It's gonna be a lot of fun. You're gonna need a couple of things, same things we pretty much have been using the last few lessons and that's gonna be a piece of paper. I'm gonna use the paper out of my printer. I always grab a few extra pages, that way when we use our sharpen marker, it doesn't leak onto the table. The other item you're going to need is a pencil and an eraser and a Sharpie marker. These items we pretty much have been using every lesson. The last thing you're going to need is some crayons for coloring. So I used crayons for my picture, but markers would also work if you would rather use markers. I'm using crayons. All right. Oh, colored pencils too. That would be wonderful. If you have colored pencils, that would look really good too. So whatever you have, go ahead and gather those items up. So in a minute, I'm gonna flip the camera over to my hand and then we'll begin. So now you're looking down at my desk where I'm working, I've got my pencil, I've got my eraser, my Sharpie marker. Now we can begin. Don't forget your crayons also. Oh. I forgot to mention, now the last time we talked, I told you that I keep my crayons in a little mug when I'm working. It makes it a little easier for me to grab my colors, but you do not have to do this. That's just my trick. And before we begin, if you have any old broken crayons, the color that you might want to use on its side is brown and blue and green for the sky. So look around your house and see if you might have some of those old broken crayons because you can use the side of your crayon to make this really neat effect. But if you don't, we can just use the top of the crayon and color very softly. All right, let's begin. Again. Now, all we need right now is our paper. We're gonna be having our paper horizontal, which is along this direction, a pencil and an eraser. And the first thing we're gonna be doing is looking at the shapes of the things that we're going to be drawing. So let's look at the tent. Triangle. Over here, the side of the tent is pretty much a square. Trees, triangles, that's easy. And then the bear, we're going to do an oval shape with a circle head. And if you want to do a um, tree trunk, that's an oval. And if you want to draw a raccoon or a squirrel, that's going to be two circles on top of one another with a little rainbow tail. Let's start by finding the center of our paper with our pencil. Remember, I always put an extra page underneath or two just so that we have a little cushion. I'm gonna find the center of my paper and make a little dot. Now that center of my paper here is where we're going to draw this, the front of our tent around. So right above that dot, I'm gonna go up above it. And this is going to be the very top of the tent. So let me look right here. This is that dot right there, the top of my tent. This was the middle dot that I had earlier. So we're going to form this triangle shape first for our tent. So I'm going to go from here. That little dot is our middle dot. We're going to go below that dot. So we're going to go to the side here on an angle, making our triangle shape. Now, you can draw a straight line first, and then we can make it a little bit more curvy later. And then we're going to make the other side here. Now, make sure that this is nice and wide. We don't want to make a really tiny triangle. We want it pretty wide. And then we're going to close it off at the bottom like this. Okay, now the next thing is to erase that dot in the middle. We don't need it anymore. And we're going to form now the very top of our tent. So I wanna show you the angle that we're going to be drawing. So you'll notice 
the top of the tent doesn't go like this. It's angled, it's a diagonal line. The bottom of the tent is also a diagonal line going this direction. So from here, we're gonna be taking, just lay your pencil down right now. I'm gonna set our pencil right here at the top of that triangle so it points to this corner right up here. You see how that makes a diagonal line? I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna lay our pencil down here. We're gonna make it also be a diagonal line. It's kind of almost to the middle of the paper like this. So if we draw two lines like this, it's going to be making two parallel lines that form the top and the bottom of our side of our tent. So here is the top. I'm going to start drawing a line toward the corner, not all the way back. That doesn't need to be that long of a tent, but I'm just going to draw it kind of going up toward the corner like this. My line isn't very straight, but that's okay. I can fix it later. Then I'm going to go to this very bottom corner here. Now, before you start to draw this line, you want to make sure it's parallel with this line. You don't want to draw it on a different angle where it starts to get skinnier. You want it to be the same. So I'm going to go like this, and it's going to be kind of going toward the middle of the paper on the side. So look at those lines, make sure that they're not getting close together on the ends. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to match this line on the back side here. So this line is a little bit on an angle because it's a triangle shape. So I'm going to match it on this side. I'm just going to go like this and close it off on the end. And you notice my line wasn't quite long enough. I can just straighten it out. So now we've drawn our tent shape. Now, if you want to, you don't have to, but if you want to, you can kind of sweep it a little bit curved right here on the edge. See how it's a little bit more curved? It's not a straight line. It just makes it look a little bit more cartoony. So what I'm going to do is sweep it. So I'm going to bring it in a little bit and then out a little bit farther like that. And then close it off at the bottom. So I'm going to erase this bold line. Now I have a little bit more of a curved line on the edge. Just a little bit curved. And I can do the same thing here. I can just very lightly curve it just a little bit, just a little bit in. And then erase that over and it just makes it not look quite so stiff. Now on this side, I can do the same thing. I can just kind of sweep it in a little bit and then bring it out a little bit. I'm going to erase the other one. We just use the first line kind of as a base. Now, once you've drawn the sides of your tent, you're going to draw the door of your tent. So if you look right here, it's kind of like there's a zipper and the two flaps have opened up. So in order to draw that, all I'm going to do is draw a line coming down from the middle here. And then I swoop it around and connect it at this corner. And then swoop it around and connect it at this corner. Now, if you want to add a window, what we're going to do is just draw a square, but it's got to match this top and the bottom lines here and sides here. So in order to do that, we're just going to draw. Now I want you to make your window down a little bit lower than you think it needs to be because we're going to add that little edge of the tent that's rolled up. So when you have a tent and you have a window in it, there's a screen there so the mosquitoes don't get in and then there's a little flap and you have to kind of roll it up and then you tie it. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a line that matches the top of this tent. So I'm just going to go down here a little bit lower and draw a line that's the same direction as this one. 
So it's gonna be the top of the window. And I'm gonna match this line down here to go on the bottom of the window. And then I'm gonna draw the side matching this one. So yeah, they're parallel. And I'm gonna do the same on this side. So there's my window. Now you can leave it like this. And all you have to do is add one little extra piece right here. So that's kind of the inside of the tent right there. You can leave it like this. You can color it later. Or you can add this little fabric that's rolled up at the top. Super easy. All you have to do is draw one more line that matches this one, but make it a little bit longer, just a tiny bit longer. Bring it out just a little bit farther. And then you're going to round it on this side. And round it on this side. And then right here, you're just going to draw kind of a half curve on this side. So now this fabric's been rolled up. And we're just going to tie it by adding a little loop right here. So now your tent is done. Now the only other part you need, and you don't have to add this, but if you actually have a tent, there's one little extra flap of fabric right here at the bottom. And this keeps the dirt from getting inside your tent. So I'm gonna add that in, but you don't have to. You can leave it out if you want to. Next thing we're gonna draw is our horizon line. So the horizon line is going to be the separation between the front of our ground and the sky, the horizon, line in the background. So this would be, if we didn't draw this line, it would look like our tent is floating in the air and our tree is floating and our bear is floating. So what we're gonna do is just draw a line across the paper like this. We want it to be higher than this highest point of your tent. So that's the highest point at the bottom of my tent. So my horizon line needs to be a little higher than that. And you're just going to connect that line all the way across your paper. You can draw right through your tent as long as you're drawing lightly. And you can go back in and erase it later. Mine always tends to curve up on the edges. It's crooked. I bet it's crooked. It's always crooked. You can always fix it later with your magic though. And then you're going to erase the line out of the middle of your tent. There we go. Now the next part of our picture will be the things that we're going to put in the foreground, the front of our picture. Foreground, this is the background, foreground. So in the front of our picture, what is going to be in our foreground? So let's see what I drew. I drew a tree in the foreground. The trees in the background are smaller. I drew a bear and I drew a raccoon. So if you'd like to add a tree, over here, you decide how large you want your tree. And it's really simple. We're basically going to start with a triangle shape. And then we're just going to add the trunk. And then if we want to put something in front later, you could put uh, a rabbit, a squirrel, a dog, a campfire. You can decide later what you want to put there. So let's start with that tree first. So we've got a nice big space over here. So I'm going to decide. Uh, first off, how big I want my tree to be. So my one in the foreground, I want to be pretty large. I'm just gonna draw a really light triangle shape and I want my tree to be kind of around the same space as my tent. I'm starting with a really light triangle. I'm gonna erase all those lines later. And then the trunk. So for my trunk, I'm keeping it pretty simple. I'm just going to draw two lines coming down and just going to very lightly close it off for now. It might change as I keep designing my composition. All right, now I'm going to go in and erase the center of my tree. And I don't want to leave it this kind of graphic style. I want it a little bit more realistic. So what I'm going to do is add this kind of tiered shape to it. And the way I do that is I bring a line that goes out and in, 
out and in on the side. And each tier gets a little bit wider. That's why I use this triangle to help me. So the first tier is going to, my smallest one is just going to go down on an angle and then back. And my next tier is going to go a little bit farther and longer. So this line's going a little bit farther out from here and back. And then I can do it again and back. And then my final one. And I'm going to match it on the opposite side. So I'm going to come up and around here and I'm making my lines pretty close to matching. If you want to try to draw a line lightly across to see where you drew it, you can do that as well, but you don't have to. Speaking of trees, I think they're trimming the tree next door. I don't know if you can hear that in my recording, but they're trimming a tree right next to us. Perfect timing as we're drawing a tree. All right, when you're done drawing these tiered marks, when we get ready to use our Sharpie marker, we'll use that line to kind of help us draw this kind of fringe on our evergreen tree. All right, so once your tree is drawn, it's time to decide what you want to draw in front of the tree. So I drew a bear, it's very simple. You could also do the same shape like this and it wouldn't have to be a bear, maybe it could be your pet dog. So basically, I'm just starting with an oval and then a circle, kind of a rainbow shape for the legs. I kept it really, really simple. So let me show you how I did that. So the first part for my bear would be his back or his body. So I'm just gonna make an oval shape like this. And then I'm gonna overlap a circle here. And you want to make sure that the circle is right here at the front it's overlapping. You don't want it way out here. So you want to overlap it in front. I'm kind of making a wide circle here. And then the muzzle is going to be one more circle at the lower section of the face. So I'm bringing it right down here. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to erase the lines that I don't want to keep in my picture. And that's going to help let not get confused. I'm going to erase the lines inside the muzzle. I'm going to erase the lines inside the face. And then all of the line inside the bear. Because part of the tree is inside the bear's back. So I don't want that to show. Now you might have made your bear a little lower. You may not have to do that. All right, for the nose, I'm going to bring the nose toward that lower portion of the muzzle. I'm going to make an oval on its side. For the ears, I'm going to come up here. Here's the center. We want to come off to the side here and draw a half circle with another half circle inside. I'm going to match it on this side. So here's the center. I'm going to try to make it distance the same on this side as well with a half circle here. And then you could make the bear's eyes open like this. Or you could make the bear's eyes closed. I'm gonna leave that up to you. And then for the legs, I start by drawing kind of a curve from the side of his cheek here. So I wanna make sure his legs are wide. So I'm gonna do this kind of wide curve here. And then I'm going to match it, almost like I'm drawing a rainbow through his head. And I'm going to bring that wide curve out this direction as well. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure that when you're drawing his legs, you keep them pretty wide. You don't want to have skinny legs. So now, underneath that rainbow, I'm going to make a little bit thinner rainbow like this. I want to make sure that those two legs are going to be pretty wide. And then for the feet, the way I do the feet is I bring this edge, the heel of the foot, a little bit lower. And then I'm just going to make a backwards curve like this. And then for this foot, I want to bring that leg down a little bit lower too, so they match. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to do a little backwards curve. 
Now you always can correct this later and erase one foot if one foot's bigger than the other, one leg's longer than the other. You can correct it later. And then we're gonna go from the top of his head, that's gonna be his back. And we're gonna add just a slight bump right here for his tail. Just a little bump to the side. And then we're gonna continue this line down. This is gonna be his back leg, so I'm gonna curve it just a little bit. And it needs to kind of match up with this leg. I'm just gonna kind of draw a little light line to kind of help me place my foot in the right spot. It's gonna come forward, it's gonna match this foot. So I'm just gonna go like this and draw a little curve to match this one. And then I'm just gonna bring the leg up just short here to match it, touch his tummy. That will be his tummy. And then I'm gonna go in and erase the lines I don't want to keep. So I'm gonna erase the lines inside of his leg here. I'm going to erase the lines inside of his leg here. And then I'm going to add a curved toe and two curved toes here. And then on this foot, we're going to curve the opposite direction. It's going to match the front of the foot here. So one, two. All right, so my bear is drawn now. Now I'm gonna go over here and decide what I want in this section. So in this section, you could draw a squirrel, you could draw a camping chair, you could draw you, you could draw um, another animal from the forest. I drew a raccoon, it could also be a squirrel. So um, I just drew a little log that the squirrel was standing on, but you could, I'm going to leave it up to you, whatever you want to draw. So to draw that picture, what I did here to make the log, I'm going to start by drawing an oval on its side. So I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to draw an oval on its side. So I'm going around like this with my pencil. And then I'm going to connect two short lines coming down like this. You don't want this log very wide or tall. And then I'm gonna round it on the bottom. I'm gonna make sure that this is round, not straight across. So I'm gonna round it. That's gonna get the illusion of this being a round log. Now inside that log, I want you to make a swirl. So the way you're gonna do it, you're gonna start with a center point like this, and you're just gonna match this curve by going around like this. Very long, kind of like a candy cane swirl or peppermint candy. So that is going to be the center of the log. Now on top of that log is where you're going to draw something, whatever you want it to be. You could draw a squirrel or a raccoon. To start out, either one is exactly the same. I start by making a big wide circle and another really wide circle here. This is almost a football shape for the head. So let me show you how I do this. So I'll be covering up most of this log. So I start by drawing the log first, then I change up. So the first thing I'm gonna draw, now I don't want my squirrel gigantic because I have a bear. Maybe this is a bear cub. So I'm gonna start by drawing just a kind of a, a round circle for the body. And then I'm gonna overlap another circle here, but I want this one to be a little bit wider, like that. Once I have that shape, I'm gonna go in with uh, my eraser, you see my magic rub, and I'm gonna erase the lines inside the face first, right here. Then I'm going to erase the lines inside the body Next. So there's two separate pieces here, head, body. Now to make it look like either a raccoon or a squirrel, I'm just gonna start with a little circle for a nose right here. And I'm gonna connect a line from the side here and the side here. Now if you were going to make a raccoon, you would add another line here 
in here up at the top and then you would color this part a little bit darker than the head. If you want to make a squirrel, you can leave it just like this. So once I draw my nose, now you can add a mouth. I'm not going to, but you can add a little mouth like this going down and down if you wanted to. Or you could keep it really simple. It's getting so small, I'm gonna just keep it simple. Now for the eyes, you can make the eyes open or shut. For the ears, oh, first off, let me extend the cheeks. So I'm going to make his cheeks a little bit wider. Look what I'm doing. I'm adding kind of a football shape to the edge right here and here. So I just kind of made a little point on the ends. I'm going to curve around the top of his head. And then I'm going to add two small ears on the side. And for his hands, I'm just going to draw a little curve for this, kind of like his paw. And a curve on this side. And then I'm just going to bring the lines down. So now his belly is going to be white, and sides of him will be a color, depending upon what animal we draw. So we could do a gray squirrel or a brown squirrel. We could do a raccoon. We're drawing a raccoon, you would add another line here and here for his mask. See? Now for the feet, I'm just going to make a little loop here and a loop there. And for the tail, I'm just going to start right up here by his cheek and then we draw a big curve like that. And you want the tail to be skinny here and then get wider all the way down to the to where his back is. So I'm going to just start right here. I'm going to make a little squibbly line. It's going to be skinny at first. Then it's just going to curve around. Don't bring it up here. It's going to be nice and fat right here. Big fluffy tail and bring it all the way down to his back. Now, if you were going to make it a raccoon, you would draw some squiggles in with your marker later to draw the bands in his tail. Now, another thing you could do if you wanted to make it a squirrel, you could add teeth like this. And then you would color him brown. And he would not have this little part right up here above his eyes. He wouldn't have a little mask. So now that would be a squirrel. This would be a raccoon. They look exactly the same. You just change it up by doing two different lines. All right, from here, we're gonna work on the background. So for the background, I want you to keep it simple. We want this to be the main focus of your picture. So for the background, we're just gonna draw two mountains. So I'm gonna let you decide how high or low your mountains are in the background. And then if you would like to add a little bit more interest to your picture, you can add some small trees in the background. So if it's something in the foreground, it's going to be large. If it's in the background, they're going to be smaller. So this tree is even smaller than those two, two trees. So this tree would be in the distance. So I'm going to start by drawing a very small triangle. So I'm going to do one over here, a very small little triangle. And a very skinny little trunk. If I'm going to draw some trees on this mountain that's in front of this one, this one will be a little bit larger. So you want to be a little bit larger than this one, but definitely smaller than this one. If I want one farther away, I would make a smaller tree. Same idea. Okay, we've got the drawing done. We're going to move on to our Sharpie marker now, and we are going to outline everything that we drew earlier. So you want to take your marker and go over all of your lines the same way that we drew them before. Um, remember, you're going to hold your marker straight up and down for a, for a skinny line or on its side if you want the line to be a little bit thicker. So remember I showed you this the last time we did our lesson. If you hold it on its side, 
and you go over your lines twice, you'll have a thicker line like this. If you hold it straight up and down, you're going to have a skinnier line. So I want you to pause the video, go ahead and ink in all of your lines, and then I'll meet you back here once everything's inked in. Don't ink in the tree, because I'm going to show you a trick on the tree, but everything else I want you to ink in. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, and then meet me back here when you are done inking everything except your trees. All right, welcome back. Now we're going to work on the tree. So I've inked everything else in. We'll go in with a couple little details in just a minute, but I want to show you how I do my trees. So the first thing is to ink the trunk. That's simple. You might have already done that, but if you haven't, go ahead and ink the trunk. That part's easy. And so how we're going to do this is we're going to draw real quick the top peak. We're just going to go flick, flick with our pen. And then we're going to take our pen and we're going to brush quick strokes going down like this to make this line. So I'm just going to do this real fast. Like that. Now once we go to the next tier, we're going to do it again. Out, out, and then we're going to do the second line again. Now you'll notice all my lines kind of curve to the left. That's because I'm left-handed. So when I do this real fast, they all kind of curve the left. If you're right-handed, they'll curve to the right. Then I'm going to go to the next tier or the next level. And then do the same thing. And then I'm going to do the last tier. Out, out. And then finish the bottom of the tree. Now, once you've done one tree, the ones in the background are a little bit farther away, so you couldn't see the detail as much. So these ones, you're just going to do a couple little ones like that. You notice I'm barely touching my pen. It's not as detailed as this one is. And for the ones that are really far in the distance, I'm hardly doing any detail at all. Now, once your tree is done, I'm going to show you how to do the rings in the log. If you did these swirls earlier, now you're just going to ink the lines that show underneath your animal. And then this part here, this would be the bark of the tree. What we're going to do is draw some straight up and down lines, vertical lines like this. And I want them kind of close together on this side just a few and kind of close together on this side. Now from here, we're gonna draw them a little bit farther apart. And they don't need to be straight. They can be kind of wonky and crooked. So that gives the illusion that the, uh, this log is curved. And then this is almost like a shadow by doing our lines like that. So once you are done with all of your detail work, the only other thing you need to do is put a little bit of a layer of ground underneath whatever is standing. So see, I'm just kind of going like this and adding a little bit of a mark underneath where the bear is standing. I'm going to put a little mark around where this log would be on the ground. I'm going to add a little mark here, kind of where the tent is. And if the bottom of your tree, oh, here's another place I could do a few vertical lines for the trunk of my tree. And if the bottom of your trunk is showing, if your bear is not as high as mine, you would draw a little bit of ground underneath your tree like this, just a little wavy line. All right, time to erase our pencil lines. Now remember, you can erase over Sharpie marker. But it's a little bit harder to erase if you're using a crayon as your outlining tool. So I use Magic Rub erasers. I cut them in half. This is what I use. They last me for years. I hold my hand like this and I erase inside this crook of my hand. I call it the duck smell, but this was a duck. Same quack. So I can go in and erase my pencil lines quickly. If I hold my hand like this, my paper doesn't wrinkle. I can get all those crumbs brushed off onto the floor. And then we can move on to our coloring. 
And I'm going to give you a lot of freedom on your coloring today. I don't want you to be matching the picture that I did. I want you to color the picture the way you like to. I use crayons for mine. Um, colored pencils would do wonderful. Markers would look fantastic also. So I really don't want to tell you how to color your picture. I want you to do this yourself. But I'm going to give you a couple pointers. And so here are some of my pointers. Number one, you don't have to make your tent one color. It could be polka dot, it could be striped, it could have all different colors in it. Number two, when you get down to this part here, the inside of the tent, here's an idea. Maybe you want to color the inside of the tent yellow, especially if you're going to be doing a nighttime scene with a dark sky and maybe a moon in the sky. You might want to put yellow in here so it looks like you are inside your tent, maybe with a flashlight on. Secondly, when I colored my tree, I didn't use one color. I used lots of colors. I used different shades of green and yellow. I even used some blue on the side here. So I want you to be, some, be a little creative when you're coloring your tree. So I started with a layer of yellow, then I added a layer of lime green, and then a layer of dark green. I added darker colors on this side and lighter colors on this side. And I matched it on the other trees as well. So it looks like the light is shining from the left side of my paper. You could make a black bear. You could make a brown bear. You could mix black and brown together. Many bears are not necessarily jet black. They're a dark brownish black. You could make a gray squirrel. You could do a chipmunk. You could color it as a raccoon. For my tree, I colored different shades of brown, white on the top and dark on the sides and dark around the edge. For my sky and the grass in the background and my ground, I want to show you what I did. I use a broken crayon when I'm doing this type of thing. And the way I do that, let me move my white paper out. The way I do that is I open, I peel off the wrapper off of an old crayon. Please don't do this to your brand new crayons. But I peel the wrapper off. I hold my paper so there is nothing underneath except something bigger. I have a big sheet of paper underneath or you could use like a big magazine underneath. You just want to make sure you don't have any paper underneath here on an angle like you wouldn't want to have one piece of paper like this and then start scribbling like this because you're going to get a mark on your paper and you don't want that to happen so wherever there's a line behind it it's going to really show up when you start rubbing your crayon so what i do is i just take my crayon i hold my paper with one hand and i pull using the side of my crayon like this now, I like to have a big piece of paper underneath to catch all of the crayon that goes off the edge of my paper. See how I'm doing that? And if you get into a tight little spot like this, you can just use the tip of the crayon. I really love using the sides of my crayon, and man, you can color so quickly when you do this. I also blended green and brown together. I didn't use just straight brown. Do you notice my shadow? Let me tell you how I did my shadow. I did exactly the same thing. I just took some black and I used just the tip of the crayon and I very softly colored it like this underneath the bear. So if your light, your sunlight is on the left side, your shadow would be tilted toward the right. So I just made sure that I scribbled very softly underneath my tent and to the right side of my tent like this, underneath my log and to the right side of my log. You could also add a little shadow to the right side and over here. Inside here, I added a little shadow. So I took my black crayon and I just colored it very softly just to make it look a little darker. You could do the same thing here. And then for my trees, you'll notice that I added a little shadow underneath. Now I didn't use black there, I just used a darker green for my shadows. So I hope you had fun today making our happy camper picture. 
I had fun teaching you. And if you want to send me a picture of your work, I would love to see it. You can send me an email at rtorres at lcusd.net. Take a picture of your artwork and send it to me. I would love to see what you did. And I always reply back. All right, I hope you had fun. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me with Art with Mrs. Torres.